Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're talking about how to create amazing track titles for your travel videos. Titles are one of those things that are hard to make look cool. Make, make look cool. Is that even English? Hard to look, make look good. That's still not English, whatever. I'm also going to go over the difference between the 2D tracker built into Final Cut Pro and the 3D tracker from Motion VFX. So let's go. So here is the drone clip that I'm going to use to overlay the 3D text title. And the plugin's called mTracker 3D. Link will be in my description. So we're gonna install that, drag it on top of the clip, and select track. I've sped this up four times so you have an idea of how long it takes to track that clip. Next, I'm gonna go to mTracker 3D titles and then select one of the, the titles to drag on top of my clip. But I'm gonna go and use the expansion pack here and just click a random title. Let's use the arise and drag it on top of the clip. We'll cut it to meet the length of the clip. Okay, let's change the title to say Saudi, since that's where we filmed this in the Saudi desert. Now we're gonna go down to 3D text and make it 3D and change some of these parameters. First, let's change the texture. So there's various ways to change here. Like you can go down to this called um, stone and we can change it to ancient structure as that's like fitting for this area of the world. But I also like this one called uh, plaster and sand plaster. It really looks like sand here. So it matches the landscape that we're dealing with. However, these colors are still pretty wacky. So let's hit that color palette and the eyedropper tool. Then we're going to select some of the texture that matches more of our landscape. So that is a bit better than that orangey color. So let's adjust the brightness saturation and the hue a little bit even to match to our landscape. And that looks pretty good. Okay, back up now to the parameters of our 3D text. Let's adjust the depth so the 3D text is more visible. And let's change the edge. We're going to round out those front edges. It's more like a smooth stonework. That looks a bit cooler than before. Then we want to change the lighting style to above because the lighting is top down. The sun is shooting directly down. Okay, back to our titles menu and we are going to adjust the shadows here. So we want to change the angle of the shadows. And the way we do that is the angle of the light. So we change the light angle. As you can see, the shadows extend as we change our light angle. And here's the wheel for the rotation. Then we can change where the light is coming from so that clearly adjusts our shadow. So let's put it on a nice little angle there. And not too long because the light is very much top down. As you can see, there's not much of a shadow on the car itself. All right, let's actually darken those shadows down a bit more so they're more vibrant. And then as you can see, the letters appear to be floating on top of the ground a bit. So let's go up to our position, title position, and just drop that down. You can see as we rise that up, it looks like they're floating. We're gonna put that right onto the ground. Okay, so you'll notice that the title isn't actually tracking yet. It's just sitting there. We have to apply that tracking information by copying the track and pasting it onto our title layer. So right there, we paste it. And now the information has been transferred over to the title layer. Okay, actually let's get rid of this animation in effect. So let's go over to the right side get rid of the animation in and out. And now we're going to select where we want the title to start. So these three points here, the X, Y, and Z axis, if you hold shift, that'll lock it horizontal and click, and then our title will lock into place. And typically it gets bigger. So let's bring that content scale down to match the size we want. All right, that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the beginning, see if the car drives right through the lettering. And it appears to be doing so that's awesome all right let's look at full screen Ooh -hoo. look at the shadow move as the light passes wow okay on to the built-in final cut pro tracker all we need to do now is just drag a title right on to the frame right onto the clip which is amazing because final cuts never had anything like this before so let's zoom in and as you can see at the top we have a new menu called tracker right beside transform so that's new as part of the update all right, let's adjust our tracking range, this little grid, to just track the car. And then up on the left side, top left, you'll see Analyze. <clears throat> let's click that. And it analyzes so quick. This is real time. So it's insanely fast, which is very impressive. Well done, Final Cut. 
zoom back out to fit and bring the title over to where we want it to track alongside. Change the style. What should we do? Any one of these 2D styles doesn't matter. Ultralight, that sounds good. And slide it over. Maybe we can even change the color to match more of this landscape. So the same thing, click color, eyedropper. Get some of that sandstone over there. And let's take a look. The tracking looks really good. However, you can notice a bit of rotation. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on. See how it's kind of going back left to right wobbling. So the way we fix that is we go to our film strip and click on the right side by transform and remove rotation. And that will lock that in place. Perfect, just like that. So we change it to text to Saudi. And there we go, 2D tracker. Now there's many use cases for this, but let's use another example. We're gonna use a Gaussian blur. So let's say we didn't have permission to film someone's face and we wanna drag on a blur. So we're gonna drag this right onto the face and you can see it's tracking that as an object. It should track this face, but his face is turned a bit sideways. So it's, the computer's not recognizing it as that. So let's just circle that out, make it much smaller. Then we'll change our parameters on the right so it's not so aggressive. Bring the Gaussian blur down quite a lot so it looks just slightly blurred and isn't too damaging on our clip. Oh, first of all, we have to actually click Analyze. And it tracks it really fast, lightning speed. There we go. So it's pretty effective, only slightly blurring his face. Here's another example. Here's Paris Vera. We drag it over her face and actually you see that it detects faces when they're face on. So let's analyze that really fast, which is great. And then we'll just adjust the blur, which we already did. And look at it, slightly blurred. Perfect if you ever need to blur out someone's faces if you don't have permission. If you want to rename the trackers, just double click their titles and you can rename them so you don't get confused when you have a bunch of different tracks going on in your projects. So quickly going back to our titles, one question I often get is, can we get this 3D look from the built-in Final Cut Pro tracker? Now the difference is in the 3D tracker, it tracks the whole frame. Whereas in this Final Cut Pro tracker, we have to select an area. For example, this area that I've selected right here has a decent amount of contrast in it, easy enough for the tracker to pick up so that when we click analyze, it will track pretty well. And as you can see, it does, it holds very well. However, when we drop our title in beside and adjust it to the size we want, when we hit the final result, it doesn't really give us the results we're looking for. As you can see, the title is bouncing all over the place there. Whereas when it comes to M-Tracker 3D, when we track that frame, it gets information from all over, getting a full understanding of the video clip, which ends up being a way better, much more accurate track. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hopefully this tutorial helped to spice up your travel videos a little bit. These 3D and 2D trackers have so many other use cases. For example, the 3D tracker, you can bring in objects and interact with them in your videos. Or with the 2D tracker, anything that you previously had to take the time to keyframe, like fire or smoke, now you just drop it in with the built-in plugin and it's stuck in place. So have fun learning, practicing, and getting better with it. Don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.